Erwin McMurrin said, a life well lived is a very exquisite work of art. Today we celebrate the glorious exit of an icon, Mrs. Margaret Olufumlayo Ariba, who slept in the Lord on the 23rd of September 2020. Having spent 83 years on earth, she is survived by children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. As usual, a quad blog is live at the event to give you minute-by-minute minute details as the event unfolds. Stay with us. Mama teacher, counselor, evangelist, disciplinarian, CC Boda, Mama Lesson are just some of many names Mrs. Olua Fumilayo Ariba bore during her over eight decade stay on this earth before her passing. These names are a testament to her versatility and many roles in the life of those she touched along the way. Mother, teacher, Christian, and lover of the things of God. Mrs. Margaret Olufumilayo Ariba slept with the Lord on September 26, 2020, at the ripe age of 83, and her body was interred at the Atan Cemetery on the 13th of October, 2020. The service of songs took place on the 12th of November, 2020, at number 25 at Tinuke Olabanji Street, Ikeja, Lagos, and was attended by family, friends, and well wishers. Pastor Emeka, who officiated the service, admonished the congregation to emulate Mama and eschew evil vices. You see, as humans, we look at outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And as God looks at your heart this evening, what is he seeing? As God looks at my heart. As God looks at my heart, he sees a man who is struggling with many things. A man who wants to please him, yes. But a man who falls into sin from time to time. That's what God sees in my heart. He sees a heart that is troubled at different times over different things. That really are not my business. Because if I truly understand that God is sovereign, whatever it is that is happening, I will surrender and let him take control of it. Well wishes and friends of the family had some words of comfort for the family and they also paid glowing tributes to Mama. Uh, I call her Yinka. She's a darling. She happens to be a secretary of a group that we have in our town, in Amsterdam. And she has been doing a wonderful job. She's a darling any day, any time. The children, too, pay tribute to their late mother. Song, 
so that he can hear. Most of the time, you will know, ask the children to come and read the Bible for her. Sometimes I read the Bible for her and share what I read as I go. Mama's daughter, Mrs. Yinka Adeyemi, related the lessons learned from Mama's life on earth and some of the legacies she left behind. She has made a lot of impact in the lives of us, not so just us, but people around us. Very accommodating. Her door was open to everybody, everybody from every... In fact, when we were growing up, it was like we are in a, a hostel. Uh, or, you know, everybody will come to, you know, drop their children to come. Whoever is looking for accommodation, pending the time they will find the accommodation, they will always live with us. That has taught us to, you know, be accommodating as well. Because when you live with a lot of people from different backgrounds, from different religions, from different um, tribes, they were all living here and living peacefully. So Mama has taught us to live in peace with each other. Mama was a disciplinarian, but she had a pure heart. She would always tell you what is right and what is wrong. She, do, she was not hesitant about saying, you know, the, uh, you know, how everything looks, you know. She would tell you if you are wrong and she would tell you if you are right. She was ready to praise, you know. I know that. She was a wonderful woman, amazing woman, and very strong. Very, very strong. She was sick towards the last, her last day, but she was still strong. Her spirit was still very strong. Guests, those who knew her directly, and even those who didn't, poured encomiums on the person of Mama. Mama was the most peace-loving person that I've ever come across. And that is true in every sense. Mama, you will never meet Mama in any bad mood. And I have known Mama from childhood. When we will go to school and come back, I will meet our food on the table, you know, and uh, Mama will not even allow us to remove our uniform and will say, oh, your food will get cold, your food will get cold. So we'll have to eat immediately we are back from school. So he has, she has, uh, she reared us from that very little age, you know. Um, all the friends of our daughter, you know, myself inclusive. So it, she was one amazing person. The legacies she left behind were not to be forgotten. She's a giving woman. She's a woman that tolerates. She's a woman that um, accommodated every, every tribe. Do you understand? She's a woman that, um, that loved God. So if it's a legacy, she has left that for her children and for her grandchildren. And for her in-laws, son-in-laws, do you understand? Because when they talk about children, we are part of her children. Do you understand? So that is what I know about her. The legacy I got from Mama is her humility. It's humble to the core. Just part of the fact that there are a long disparity between my age and her. She used to use, call me with respect, uncle, after all. I'm not, I and her children are almost eight men, but used to call me uncle. He's so humble. So I got the legacy of humility from her. And number two, he's a good Christian. Uh, it got to a certain time when I have challenges with one of my child. That my child now is in London. It's my man that took my child to the fellowship of our church. No matter go to fellowship every Wednesday, from that place, we got miracle. God did miracle through Mama and God. You see, once you leave this life, uh, she is one of the older generation, so she's like handing over the button to the next generation to fill in. There's the next generation of women and mothers. So what we have to do is we have to take all the good, all the joyful, all the happy moments, leave the other ones. I believe there were situations when she was desperate, when she was sad, when she was angry. I hope she found a way how to transform this into something better so that her children have this seed of goodness, this seed of hope in themselves that also helps them to live better lives and be, the, uh, be also very good mothers and women.
for their own children. You see, the, the testimonies, all the testimonies here today, you can hear it, is a testimony of giving. It's a legacy of reaching out. Because you have not really lived well if you cannot impact other people's lives. So if there's anything that Mama lived in her children, that is the legacy of altruism, giving back to the society, giving back to the community. That is the spirit that her daughter, Mrs. Yinka Adeyemi, imbibed. That is why she's the backbone of our organization, which is the Amsterdam Memorial uh, uh, Foundation. I will encourage the children to take after Mama. Her sincerity, her encouragement, her love and concern for everybody. That, that legacy Mama left behind, they should, they should continue with it. And God will bless them abundantly. The outstanding legacy and principle she have laid down is that we should emulate most of the virtue that she have laid down. And one of the virtues is that, as Ella said, She's a print mo mother. She pray always. She pray always. And she call people. She wants to find out what is going on with you. Almost often time. She call people, pray for you. Even at the time when I came, when I was called that she was so strong, at the point of that, when I, I came, she was praying for me. It's all me to be praying for her. Those are the legacy that I've seen about her lifestyle. The next day, Friday, 13th day of November 2020, saw even more people gather to pay their last tribute and respect to late Mama as they trooped into the Lagos Christian Church, Alausa, as early as 8 a.m. for the church service and internment, which was to follow immediately after at the Otan ceremony. Amid strict adherence to COVID-19 protocols, the service began in earnest with the officiating cleric and joining the congregation to be like Mama, to take away arrogance from their lives and not to be put up their hope in wealth but in things of God. <laughs> Mama's granddaughter read out her impressive and inspirational biography. July Arriba was born in Abelkuta on 21st January 1937 to the family of Chief Edwina Pamuiwa and Madam Comfort Ademi Ike Pamuiwa Mutin Kukoi of the Togo Quarter, Abelkuta Bodhi Her father was a tax collector who worked at the tax office while her mother was in petty trading. She was the first child of her parents, and her birth was had a good fortune for her dad. Hence, she was named Oduwakunulayo, God has given me joy. Prayers for her family, in-laws and friends were said. Our God and our Father, we say thank you, because your word says that in every situation we should give thanks to you. And at this point in time, we indeed give thanks to you. Because you have done something good and something great, something beautiful in the life of Mama. And that's why we have a children standing before you this morning. That's why we have a kingdom standing before you this morning. That's why we have the privilege and the opportunity to pray for them this morning. The grandchildren and the great grandchildren that she left behind. I will say glory to your holy name. Mama Olufumilayo Ariba's long and fruitful life started when she was born on 21st January 1937 in Abiokuta and then on at St. Peter's Primary School, Itesi, Abiokuta, on to St. Agnes Catholic Teachers Training College, Maryland, Lagos, as the foundations for her work with God. 
She was later to marry her husband, late Chief Anthony Adibayo Ariba, on the 19th of June 1959 in a union that produced six children. She taught in Adordu for several years, went to the UK for a course in catering and hotel management in 1962 at the Birmingham Catering School, came back home and established the Adiolu restaurant together with her husband and later on joined the Nigerian Port Authority before retiring in 1985. This paved the way for her to explore her passion for early childhood education when she established a pre-nursery school before she settled down in the Deeper Life Church in 1991 where she gave her life to God and started her walk with God in her quest to give back to humanity. Mama Olufumilayo Ariba continued to serve selflessly in many capacities, giving her money, time and other resources up until the time of her death earning her the love of everyone who has known her directly or indirectly in one way or another across social and ethnic divides and geographical boundaries. Mama was a very kind hearted woman, very generous, and I can see the reflection in her daughter's life. I will never, never forget Mama. Before the family proceeded to the cemetery for the internment, a moment for them to thank everyone for all the love and support shown to Mama and her family. On behalf of my children, uh, and my family, I want to thank everybody for supporting our business and for giving Mama the uh, I want to thank the church also. The church has been wonderful during her life and even at a difficult time of the wicked women. The church has been supportive and has been there for us. We want to thank you for all that you've done for the family. Before laying Mama to rest, one final exhortation. Let, it, let this not just be a ceremony for us. Let this be a time of change. APC promised change. Was there change? There was no change because human beings can't bring change. Only God can. So I pray that today will be a day of change because it is God moving right now, calling out to us, asking us to send that text so that we can understand the scripture more. Because without understanding and knowledge, there can be no spiritual progress. When it was time to pour the earth, some members of her family couldn't hold back the tears. <laughs> After the internment proper, the family spoke more about the nature of Mama and what they will take away from her life left us to be accommodating to be able to show love to people around us and um, she had lived a good life so i think we that she has left behind we also have to emulate and follow that same path of ensuring that the people we come across or see or meet we are able to impart something positive in their life she has left us with the word of god she has left us to be disciplined, to be truthful, to be honest, to face challenge as it comes, but to depend on Christ that will help us. She's a, she's a prayer warrior. Every single one of us, she will pray for us. So that is one legacy because she knows that with prayer is answered to all things. So we take that with us, that whenever we face with difficulties, we will remember to go on our knees to cry to God. Um, I think one of the things that you know she taught us that we won't forget 
is you know devotion to to God. That's the number one thing. And um, she she also likes to do her things with a touch of excellence. So that's one of the things that I have learned from her. It's better to do it and do it well than to not um, than to do it and do it shabbily. She prefers that you do it in time and with a touch of excellence. The reception at the NUT Pavilion at Laosa was a more upbeat occasion as it was gathering of people in celebration of Mama's life. She was not only a mother to our children, she was mother to children in the neighborhood. She was somebody that, um, you know, every child would run to anytime that um, there was problem and she would receive them with open uh, arms. She was kind to um, people of her own blood and people who are not related to her. So Mama Riva lead, um, she led an exemplary life, exemplary life. She led a life uh, worthy of uh, emulation. We thank God for a life well spent in the service of uh, the Almighty. She lived for people and she lived for God. I don't even know how to describe her, but she was a mother to everyone. The moment you are her children's friend, you are automatically you automatically become a ch your ch her child. And she's been very lovely, caring, and happiness, very affectionate too. I, I don't know much about her, but I know for her to have a daughter like Bianca, she must be very good. You know, from a good, from a from a good tree, we have a good seed. You understand? So I'm very sure she must have done a lot to the people when she was alive. And then there was more encouragement for the family she left behind. Uh, the only um, advice I can give is for them to take heart and to stay to remain steadfast, believe in God, and uh, do whatever they need to do at any given time. Believe in God, with God there with them, all things are possible. For her to have given part to the kind of character I earlier described, she must have been great. She must be an embodiment of discipline and moral value, which she must have inculcated into her for her to display that much in the public space. And the, more, the much I can tell uh, the upcoming generation is to embark these values as handed down to us by the older generation. The word of encouragement is that uh, when you, we know the type of mother one is, by the time you see the product, I mean the offspring from her, I just, the word of encouragement is to let the, let the children emulate the good will and good wisdom from the mom so that they too can be of a good blessing to their children. Uh, yes, the thing I see in here is simple. Always make sure you take care of your kids for them to be able to take care of you towards the end and to the end of your own life. So I encourage all of us, both young, old, medium, to always give good education good moral standards to your kids and it will help you all in future. All they need to do is just emulate what their mother did. That is what true legacy is all about. True legacy is when we do something that people will write about after long we are gone. Or when we do, when we write something about ourselves that people will talk about. Our life is like a diary where we keep records of what we have done. So the mom, our mother, kept a good record of what she has done. And that is the legacy, the enduring legacy she's been able to leave behind. Now that mama is gone, they just need to come together and see themselves as one. And the vacuum she has left, you know, they don't allow it to really be noticeable, you know, by being cooperating with each other, loving each other, and, you know, the tenets and virtues of mama. A life well lived is worthy of emulation. More so, when that life was spent touching other lives, adding value and building people. Mama Olufumilayo Ariba lived her life long and well and proved to the rest of us that selflessness can and indeed will be recognized and celebrated by even those who never met you. May her gentle soul rest in peace.
In the end, they say, it's not the years in life that counts, but the life in the years. We've heard lovely, amazing stories of Mrs. Margaret Olufumlayo Ariba, who slept in the Lord. Now, our impact would live on and on and on. That's all we can take for now. And remember to follow us on all our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Echo Art Blog. My name is Bolaule Adibwe. Bye for now.